Hi, this is the Thursday evening update on what is now Hurricane Harvey over the western Gulf of Mexico, a remarkable intensification of this storm since we talked about it last night. 24 hours ago, it was only a 35 mile per hour tropical depression. It is now a hurricane with winds of 85 miles per hour and has ramped up uh, much quicker than anticipated and is already a well-defined storm that has a full day, if not a little more yet, before it makes it to the southern or central Texas coastline and thus has plenty of time with which to strengthen more over the next day or so and uh, thus becoming a greater wind and storm surge danger to an area that was already expecting intense rainfall and inland flooding over much of Texas and western Louisiana. We are now adding strong winds and storm surge to what was already a potentially catastrophic event coming for Texas. Uh, if you're looking for good news here, any signs of the storm struggling, there there really isn't much. Uh, if we look at it from a mature hurricane's point of view, we still see some pretty ragged convection today in the sense that the eyewall has not fully matured and closed off. We've seen convective bursts here in, in the infrared. You'll see these gray bursts that have periodically occurred today. You often see that in strengthening storms, but it hasn't formed a solid, constant ring around the eye, and we haven't seen the eye really clear out yet. This but more or less indicates to you that the storm is not bonkers strong yet. But the, the bad side of that coin is that it's likely going to get there because it has 24 to 30 hours left. And uh, usually these storms, when they're intensifying like this, the vortex is changing a lot. It's evolving. The pressure is falling. And there's a lot of imbalanced flow. So you will often see these chaotic convective patterns associated with the storm while it is ramping up. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually struggling that much. And this storm is indeed intensifying. We've seen the recon observations today show the falling pressure over time. 974 millibars is the latest value as I record this video. And that has fallen steadily over 30 millibars in the last 24 hours. Uh, these winds here are just over hurricane force on this flight at 700 millibars and uh, they're a little weaker than you would normally expect for a pressure this deep and it may be that they haven't caught up to this uh, to the pressure yet and it could also be a, a symptom of the continued organization that's necessary for the inner core again the eyewall is not closed yet and the convection is a bit asymmetric and again these vortexes these vortices when they're intensifying like this uh, are usually still trying to rearrange the angular momentum within them and uh, it can take a while for them to become organized enough that the winds really show up uh, with regards to the intensification that's occurring. Uh, so chances are tomorrow we will start to see these winds get a lot stronger still and the National Hurricane Center anticipates uh, that we will see up to 125 mile per hour winds with Harvey prior to landfall. That would make it a strong category 3 hurricane here by the time it makes it to the coastline either late tomorrow night on Friday or very early Saturday morning. And uh, the question that I'll often get asked is, you know, could it get even stronger than that? Could it become a Category 4 instead of just a Category 3? And the answer is yes, there's a chance that could happen. Uh, but at some point it ceases to matter. These winds will be very destructive and life-threatening regardless, and they're only going to be confined to a, a certain area left and right of the landfall point. The winds with a hurricane are, are usually in a small area, but the biggest life-threatening hazards from a storm like this are by far water-related. The storm surge and the inland flooding, especially in this case. Those two water threats are even worse in this storm than your normal storm. Uh, to, to show you that, here's the storm surge warnings along most of the Texas coastline. We're talking about water levels rising 6 to 12 feet above normally dry ground in portions of the central Texas coast, but what makes this even worse is that when the storm comes in, it's going to be stalling and meandering very, very slowly once it makes landfall over southern Texas, and this just continues to bring onshore flow to the right of the landfall point into the coastline, pushing ocean water into these bays, onto these coastlines, and prolonging storm surge flooding for an abnormally long period of time in some of these locations, and this will just accentuate the damage and exacerbate the problems observed here. If you get a, a, a uh, an evacuation order, please do heed it for your safety. You don't want to get stuck out here if the storm stalls and prevents emer emergency management and officials from rescuing people who get stuck here during that time. Uh, this also causes big, big problems for rainfall. We've been talking about the slowdown of the system for a long time now with weak steering currents between two areas of high pressure. You can see these forecast points are very clustered together. This is about a three-day period here during which the system barely moves, and some models keep it over Texas even longer than that, with some runs keeping it well into the middle part of next week before finally leaving the state. This means copious amounts of rainfall, and if the storm is stalled here, 
Uh, don't forget, a lot of rain will continue well away from the landfall point. This is the WPC forecast, and even if the system is coming ashore near or just north of Corpus Christi, installing in here, lots of rain extends to the east, and the reason for that is that the storm sitting here just continues to bring up moisture from the southern side out of the Gulf of Mexico, out of the tropics, into eastern Texas and Louisiana. So just because the storm is in southern Texas, doesn't mean that Houston and Louisiana get off the hook, unfortunately. Lots of rain coming your way. It doesn't take much to flood the Houston-Galveston area, and uh, potentially life-threatening flash flooding is possible over a wide area here. This dark purple contour is more than 20 inches of rain, and isolated amounts of up to 35 inches are currently expected over portions of Texas. It's difficult at this point to overstate the dangers of Hurricane Harvey. This is a once in a long time culmination of all sorts of things that are very dangerous and uh, almost any threat you can think of with a hurricane has been accentuated by an abnormal amount with Harvey and is likely to cause massive problems for this area of the country. So please do stay safe, adhere to the information from your local emergency management officials, your local National Weather for Service forecast office, and the National Hurricane Center to keep yourself safe. Preparation should be finishing this evening as tropical storm winds could start reaching portions of the Texas coastline as early as Friday morning, and certainly by Friday afternoon we will start to see these outer bands raking the coastline and making conditions unsafe for continuing any preparations. So do be finished with that tonight. Everyone stay safe. I'll have another update tomorrow. Stay tuned to your official sources for the latest information. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.